The isolation from the nasal passages of chickens with infectious colds or coryza of a small bacillus with which a coryza of short duration could be produced in healthy chickens has been reported by De Bleek, 1932, in Holland. By Nelson, 1932, in New Jersey. By Della Plain and Stewart, 1934. In Rhode Island, by Elliott and Lewis, 1934. In Maryland, and by Sharman Beach, 1934. In California. Nelson stated that the bacillus failed to grow on open blood agar plates, but did so when the plates were sealed with clay. The bleak, Della Plain and Stewart and Elliot and Lewis experienced no difficulty in growing their organisms aerobically on blood agar, but the latter stated that growth was favored by incubation in an atmosphere containing an excess of carbon dioxide. Sharman Beach, however, obtained no growth of the organism under aerobic conditions, but succeeded when they employed an atmosphere with 10% carbon dioxide. Nelson Delaplane, and the writers exchanged cultures and compared their requirements for growth. Nelson, 1935, reported that both Delaplane's and the Ritter's cultures behaved in his laboratory like his own and that his culture in Delaplane's laboratory grew on aerobic plates in the same manner as Delaplane's cultures. The writers, 1936, found that all three cultures colonized not at all or very meagerly on blood agar under aerobic conditions, but grew satisfactorily when air was excluded by sealing the plates or tubes with clay or when they were incubated in an atmosphere of 10% carbon dioxide. They also determined that all three cultures required the presence of both the X and the V factors for growth on or in an artificial medium thus demonstrating that they were identical and that the organism belongs, along with the influenza bacillus of man, in the genus Haemophilus. The name Haemophilus gallinarum, suggested by Elliot and Lewis, 1934, was considered more suitable than the name Bacillus haemoglobinophilus coryza gallinarum, which had been proposed by de Bleek, 1932, and was adopted. The clinical and pathological manifestations of infectious coryza, the source and method of propagation of the eight strains of the disease studied. The source and method of handling the experiment birds, are described elsewhere, 1936. It is the purpose of this paper to discuss the morphology and cultural requirements of Haemophilus gallinarum and present data concerning its relationship to the etiology of the disease. The technique employed for obtaining pure cultures of Haemophilus gallinarum from infected chickens was as follows. Nasal exudate from field cases of the disease was injected into the palatine cleft of healthy chickens. These were chloroformed during the first week of infection and the various pathological exudates streaked on fresh blood agaricus or boiled blood agaricus plates and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius in an atmosphere of 10% carbon dioxide. After 24 to 48 hours, Haemophilus gallinarum appeared in the form of pinpoint colonies which were either smooth, convex and glistening or flat. Dull and rough, on plates streaked with edema taus exudate from the subcutaneous tissues of the face plate. After 24 to 48 hours at 37 degrees Celsius, the growth, if pure, was transferred to a fresh blood agar or boiled blood agar slant with broth at the base and maintained as a stock culture. Morphology in film preparations made from the Vari hours pathological exudates, the organism appurled as a small rod with rounded ends, which showed a marked tendency toward polar staining, fig. 1. Varied from 1 to 5 microns in length and from 0.3 to 1.0 microns in width, and occurred singly, in pairs or triplets but rarely in longer chains.
In cultures on fresh blood agaricus or boiled blood agaricus, the organism showed marked pleomorphism and a tendency to quickly undergo fragmentation or degeneration. In culture 24 to 48 hours old the most characteristic form was a polar staining rod, but fig. 1. Microphotography of a methylene blue stained film of exudate showing Haemophilus gallinarum in the form of polar staining rods. X2700 or wattles a pure growth of Haemophilus gallinarum was obtained but on plates streaked with exudate from the nasal chambers, conjunctival sacs, trachea, bronchi or air sacs. Colonies of other species of bacteria, principally gram-negative staphylococci, diplococci, and cocobacilli, were often present. Single, well-isolated colonies of Haemophilus gallinarum were picked. With the aid of a dissecting microscope, and streaked over a small area of the surface of another blood agaricus fig. 2. Microphotograph of a film of a 48-hour fresh blood agaricus plate culture of Haemophilus gallinarum showing the formation of beaded threads, x1800 fig. 3. Microphotograph of a film of a 16-hour boiled blood agar slant culture of Haemophilus gallinarum showing filament formation, x1800 filamentous forms were also seen. The latter varied from short beaded threads to long filaments which frequently appeared as tangled masses, fig. 3. Some filaments exceeded 250 microns in length and on two occasions true branching was observed, fig. 4. After 24 to 48 hours, degeneration frequently began and aberrant forms made their appearance. The rods and threads became swollen and stained faintly and the ends of the polar staining rods became separated and appeared in the culture as swollen faintly staining spheres and finally only shapeless, faintly staining remnants were found. Transplants from such cultures gave rise to typical rods and filaments in the subculture. In many cultures small coccoid and coccobacillary forms were also observed.